to resume and and have a great show today. So I want to welcome everybody to Classroom 2.0 Live today. We're so glad that you joined us. I'm Kim Case, and I'm pleased to co-host today with Peggy George and Lorna Constantini. We also have our special friend with us, Steve Hargadon, and he's helping out today. And we're going to be talking today about MathCast with our special guest, Tim Falberg. So welcome and thank you for everybody who's joined us this morning. Each week at the same time we gather to discuss the technology tools and issues of the week. Our broadcast consists of a one hour session that is recorded. The link to the full video, audio recording and chat log will be posted at our Classroom 2.0 live site at live.classroom20.com. The topic each week is posted on the Classroom Live site so that you can be prepared with links, ideas, and tools that you'd like to bring and share. And we also post a newbie question of the week that's pre-announced so that you can bring possible answers and solutions. And you may not be a newbie to technology, but maybe a newbie to the topic. And so we hope that you'll bring some ideas and share those things with us. Before we begin, I'd like to review some of the features today that we'll be using in Illuminate in case you are new to the session. During today's session, we'll be asking some poll questions. To cast your vote, you'll be uh, using the, the green check and the red X as shown in the picture in the top menu row. You won't be clicking on the slides to indicate your choice at that time. Below the participant window is a hand with a green arrow on it. If you'd like to ask a question or share a, a comment during the session, please raise your hand by clicking on that, that hand with the green arrow, and then you'll be given the ability to uh, be able to use your microphone to speak. Next to the hand are two emoticons, the applause symbol and a thumbs down symbol. And in the very far right is a little blue door. And if you need to step away from your computer, please click on that blue door and then we'll know that you're not available at that time. Below those symbols is the chat window. And if you'd like to send a message to the room, you would type your message and click the send button. To send to this room, your message to this room so that everybody sees it in the chat window, make sure the words this room is visible. If you wanted to send a message to um, a specific person or the moderators, you would just type your message, select the drop down arrow to focus on the person that you wanted to send the message to, and then click send. Moderators are able to see all private messages throughout the session as well as those that um, download, download the chat log at the end of the session as well. But they, the private messages do not show up in the Illuminate recording. In the very bottom uh, left is the button to activate your microphone. You will click the mic button to begin speaking. And be sure to click the mic button when you're finished speaking to deactivate your microphone. If you can't see the full chat or the whiteboard and um, you'd like to resize the different windows, you can change the session layout. You would click on. Um, One second. You would click on View in the top menu. The layout is locked, and you may need to click on the Layout Lock option to unlock some of these features. Um, once you unlock them, then, then you can drag out the windows to resize them to fit your screen. Or you can pick one of the layouts to the right that's already um, pre-selected for you. In a moment, we're going to be using the whiteboard tools to indicate our location on the world map. And the specific whiteboard tool that we're going to be using is the laser pointer. And I'd also like to point out we also have closed captioning features this week. Tammy uh, takes care of that for us. So if you would like uh, to uh, share this session with somebody who is maybe hearing impaired, you can let them know that we do offer those features. All you would need to do is click that blue CC in that column, and it would show up next to your name, and you would be able to see the closed captioning text that Tammy 
um, is typing for us. And we really appreciate her taking care of that for us. So thank you so much, Tammy. And the laser pointer is the tool that we're going to be using next. So right now, if everybody could please click on the laser pointer tool and then click on the world map to show your location throughout the world. I'll give some time because I'm seeing some of the uh, orange buttons next to the whiteboard showing that we're having a little bit of lag with the internet today. But it is so wonderful to see people in Australia, Europe, of course the United States and Canada. And we thank everybody for joining us today. And it's exciting to see all of the continents represented. Thailand, thank you so much, Shambles, for joining us each week. And we're just so grateful and appreciative that you have taken your uh, morning, evening time to join us. Now let's get ready and go ahead and go on to our first poll question. And this is a blown up image of the menu that you'll use at the top. The green checks um, are for yes today and the red X and in well learned Wednesday there are picks and crosses, ticks and crosses, and I'm not sure which is which. I assume the X is a from uh, Two Waters, the X is a cross, but I'm not certain. Anyway, we're going to go on with our question. And the first question is, have you ever viewed or used a mass cast in your class, in your classroom with your students? If you have, please click on the green check at the very top window. And if you have not ever used a, viewed a mass cast, please click on the red X. Either one of those, and I'll give you a few seconds. Yes, it looks like it's going to be an overwhelming majority this week. And let me go ahead and get those results for us. And it looks like 69% of the respondents here in the group have not used or viewed a math cast, so that is great. So I'm assuming if we were to do this show in the future, that number would be much higher for the ones that have done so. The ones that have used the math cast in this group are 20%. So that's great. We thank you. We're going to rely on your experiences and hope that you'll share those with us. So, and let's go ahead and go on to our second poll question, which is, have you ever created a math cast or an interactive math video to use with your students? Have you ever created a math cast? If you have created one or an interactive video, please click the green check at the very top. And if you have not done so, click the red X. I'll give you a few seconds to vote in. And the results in this case, are that 58% have not used this tool before to create a screencast, and 21% of the teachers or the group here have used a math cast or created an interactive math video before. So that's wonderful. Excellent. Okay. Now we're ready to talk about the newbie question. And what are math casts? and how can I use them to support my teaching. So now I'm going to pass off the microphone to Peggy and Lorna, who are going to introduce our very special guest today as we talk about MathCast. Peggy and Lorna. Thank you, Kim. I'm all set. Hey, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, sir can. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Thanks. We are so excited to have Tim with us today. 
I first learned about Tim's MathCast project through some guest interviews on a couple of the EdTech Talk webcasts and also from Colleen King's amazing math website called the Math Playground. Some of you may be familiar with that. Well, I was so inspired listening to Tim describe the power of MathCast for improving student learning and motivation um, and couldn't wait to try it out and share it with people. Um, MathCast, and he's going to tell us all about them, so I'm not going to even attempt to describe them, but they're powerful because they're interactive, they're created by students and teachers, and um, um, they can be viewed and added to by anyone in voice threads. Well, that's the little thing I learned about um, through Lisa Parisi. And um, ever since I discovered Lisa's student math cast on VoiceThread, that has become my favorite resource for sharing the power of VoiceThread. So Tim has continuously been refining the tools and the process for creating MathCast ever since he began, which I, I think may have been about 12 years ago, Tim. And um, the the there are so many new tools that have become available now that it makes it even easier for us to do that with our students. So today we have the privilege of learning directly from Tim both about his creative vision and how we can actually create our own math cast with our students. So welcome, Tim. We're ready to go on this math cast adventure with you, and you can just take it away. Well, thank you very much, Peggy, and welcome everyone from, um, I'm so honored, uh, I know you're from around the United States and around the world, um, and that's very exciting to me because 12 years ago when I started this, as Peggy was saying, I, I just had a vision of trying to support student learning outside of my math class, and I had no idea where it would lead to 12 years later to connecting, I think that's one of the best things about this is not just the improvements in student learning, but all the connections that I've made and others have made with uh, Colleen King, and Graham McNeil in Australia, and my sister Linda uh, in Macedonia, Robert Fant in Kansas, and just dozens of others. And are you are you able to hear me all right? Yes. Yeah. We can hear you just fine, okay. Tim. You're doing great. Okay. Okay, and I, and I asked that too because I, last night our family drove up to a kind of a remote location where DSL is just hooked up, so I'm sitting at the edge of a lake, kind of, I don't say in the middle of nowhere, but I think that's one of the beauties of the internet, isn't it, that we can be anywhere and connect with each other no matter where the others are in the world. Um, so let's see, what are math casts and, and how can you use them to support your teaching, uh, collaboration, student learning? Well, let me do this. Let's I'm going to go off and do a web tour. I'm going to paste in a URL off to um, a wiki, and PV Wiki just changed its name to PV Works. And I'm hoping, am I correct that you are able to see this now? I'm just looking for somebody to tell me in the chat. Uh, yes. Okay. Absolutely, Great. we can see Great. it. Wonderful. Now, if I slide it wider open like that, do you see it wider now on your screens? No, but each participant can kind of drag the sliders at the bottom and to the right and, it, oh, and resize the window to fit their okay. screen. Okay, great, great, thanks. Um, so what you see in the middle of the screen, if you're still on the, the front page of this, is actually an animated GIF that's playing, and that was just created with uh, Camtasia Studio after I created a MathCast. But where I'd like to take you next is to the MathCast library. And in the MathCast library, if we go to MathCasts by students, because in my mind, MathCast is largely about uh, engaging students and getting them to do math and communicate about math. And you know, a lot of you don't teach math, but hopefully each of you knows maybe someone who teaches math or a student. But you know, if, if you're a science teacher or an English teacher, 
I hope you also take away that what you see here today can easily be done in your discipline or shared with someone in another discipline. These are two of my favorite photos. These are of uh, two students of uh, Graham McNeil, a great friend and colleague of mine in uh, Queensland, Australia. And it's pretty extraordinary what his students have done and what he's done with MathCast, and you'll hear more about him later. But what I thought I would just try for a moment, and if this doesn't work, then you can try this, is I'm going to go to a MathCast by a uh, third grader here. Well, let's just see if this video is going to play, and you can see if it doesn't, I'm going to this link here. And let's just see if this is going to start. taking its time. <laughs> In the early days of math casting, I uh, had to really worry about low bandwidth, but I, I still do. I uh, still try to produce these so they're visible. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pause that. Are you able to see this? Let's let's uh, see some thumbs up or thumbs down. Let's see what people are saying. Yes, I can see. I see nothing. Aha. So many of you can't see anything. All right. Well, then let's do this. Let's have you go follow. Oh, the sound is drowning out my voice. If you scroll down to the bottom of that um, math cast. Oh, and I think I accidentally ended the. <laughs> right. The tour. You can go let's back go to back. it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And. Uh, it was it was showing just fine, but like okay, you said, so we need to turn the volume down. And manually, okay, so we may each need to adjust the volume in the web tour window. So um, I'll show you as long as you don't, as as long as nobody clicks on anything in the map in the web tour, then we'll stay with you, and then you'll be able to turn down the volume, and we can continue following okay. along with you, Tim. Okay, great. Now, so if you're you can not go right ahead and we'll follow. Okay. So this video here, if you're able to see it, and if you weren't, it was the uh, the link was the third graders, the first set of third graders. And what I'm going to do, if you're able to see this, is I'm just going to scrub forward just a teeny bit. But what we hear, and that's what a lot of this is, is what you hear. You see the student just explaining how to multiply six times eight. So she's going to make a group of eight. And then another group of eight, and you can guess where that's going to go. She does that six times, and that's kind of fun. She starts counting them up by groups of five, pretty efficiently. Okay. And then she. Can you okay. Gonna, Sorry. That's okay. Can you take us to where you are? Because right now on this, on the uh, when you went back into the web tour, we're just back at the MathCast uh, main page. We there don't see are. the video. Okay. You didn't see. Oh, okay. Let me go back. Yes, we we didn't go all the way. Up, maybe, faster. I opened, maybe I opened up a new web tour accidentally. Let's see. That's I'm okay. Sorry. If you could just open, yeah, open another one and take us back to where you are. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So um, you're people able now to see that front page again? Right. Right. And then I'm going to the okay to the MathCast library, and then I'm going to okay. students. And maybe I'll I'll just describe this for a moment. So basically, what students are doing is they have a graphics tablet and a microphone or headset. And in this case, this student's using Smart Notebook software, but they could use any software. One one Microsoft OneNote. There's free software out there too that can be used for annotation. So this is one way to create a MathCast. Maybe I'm going to do this and go to what seems to be very popular, which is the uh, set of voice threads. So I'm going back to the front page, and I'm going to this link, join. Oh, you may not see where I'm pointing. I'm sorry. I'm going to the join the K7 MathCast 500 project. So let me go there. And then what's neat about this is that uh, Wes Fryer and Karen Montgomery and then Colleen King in a huge way um, evangelized this. So if you're on this page and you scroll down, you can see lots of links to uh, basically sets of math tasks. 
And where I, where I want to take you to is in the sort of in the middle of the page, you'll see a link to 5NS, a fifth grade student math test. So if I click on that, people still still with me? Are you able to see that page? Yes. Okay. All right. And uh, so there's a um, voice thread there, and uh, so voice thread makes it really incredibly easy to create mathcasts or other kinds of. Um, uh, oops. Let me turn the. Uh, see, this is a challenge because you're not going to see the videos. I recall. Okay, you got it. Oh, okay, people need to click along with me. Right, so if you just put the actual link of where you're going in that top web tour and then press enter, then it should go for all of us. Okay, so I'm right now, hopefully you're seeing the MathCast 500 opening page. Is that correct? I guess my question um, is what happens? Not yet, but let me try this and see if this works. Is everybody seeing that now? Okay. Are they seeing All right. That? And then, um, okay. I see lots of yes. Go ahead and click, okay. uh, Tim. There's a little box to the right that says Tour Guide under the red X. Click that box. Ah. And we should. Okay. And that may help us be able to follow along. Okay. Now you can't see so my mouse moving on this. Okay. No, I'm sorry, we can't you know, do I realize that. Yeah. No, you can't see my mouth. Okay. So if you scroll down on this page, about halfway down, you should see in yellow a place where it says latest changes, five and Okay. Okay. Just read student math cap. So if you'll click on that and let's see if you're gonna follow me. So far we have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you are following. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That tour guide made all the difference. Thank you so much. Yes, so now yes. I'm scrolling down on this page, and what we see, and this is a voice thread, uh, the top one here, the 5NS11, that Lisa Preci and her students, uh, or her students contributed to this. So if you click on the play, and I'd like you to do that, just click play on that voice thread, you should um, start seeing, and you can mute the audio. But you should right. see each person would need to mute the audio, but you can click that orange triangle and play and see the voice thread that was created. So if you'd like to see that now, go ahead and click that on your screen. And let's see. And then down at the bottom, there's a little scrubber bar that you can draw. So and my impression is that many, many of you are very familiar with voice thread. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. look at that. But that's that's relatively basically just uploading images of math problems, and then with a interactive whiteboard or a tablet, tablet PC, or just a mouse doodling okay. on that. So that is that is a voice thread, and um, let me try. Now it's like sharing my screen doesn't seem to work. Okay, so let's 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 head back from uh, the voice thread and let's go back to um, the home for this wiki. And what I'd like you to do, or what I'm going to do, is I'm just going to do a search on here for um, for Jing. And here is make your own math cast. And so this page is all about different ways to create math casts. So there's that ed.voice thread, and then here's Jing or Jing Pro. Um, and what I'm going to just attempt to do is to share my desktop and very slowly show you the creation of a map cast. And if that doesn't succeed, we'll go back to the uh, the tour. But I thought it would be important to maybe try to show you how you can create a map cast with Jing. So let me turn, I think I'm going to close the 
tour going on, and I'm going to try to share my screen. Okay, and I'm going to specifically share the, this uh, smart notebook here. Let's see how this goes. All right. I'm curious. Are you able to see that? Yes, you sure are. People say yes. And it loaded yeah. very quickly too. Oh, good. So that's working. Hooray. Yes, and we'll okay. be able to see your mouse too now that you're using application sharing. We'll be able to see your red mouse oh, pointer wonderful. too. So wonderful. Okay. So then, um, I, I together I worked with um, Kim Peggy Warner to create some slides. And then Google kind of let us down. I mean, it's kind of, we have all kind of a love-hate relationship. But I copied the slides this morning into a smart notebook. But and where I'm going now is, uh, and I'm not going to talk so much about this, but there's a lot of resources about why to create MathCast either for collaboration or uh, for improved student learning. What, what I want to head to next, just kind of skipping through these slides, is um, this is a slide where I was going to ask you what you wanted to see maybe next. Now we've already talked about voice threads. I think you're very familiar with that. So I thought I'd give like a two-minute demo of using graphics tab annotation software and Jing, and then let you maybe choose one of the others to see. Does that sound okay? That sounds wonderful. So I've got a um, problem set up here. And I'm going to try to go slowly here. And what I have, well, since you're able to, um, well, I have a document camera actually here next to me, but I don't want to, the document camera might use up a lot of bandwidth. What I have is I have a graphics mm -hmm. tablet. It's like a $50 graphics tablet here, just, just so you know. And there's links, information about this. And how old is my, oh, yeah, see, Mrs. is just saying I was never good at math, and I'm going to guess that was it. He didn't have some great teachers, and he certainly didn't have math cast <laughs> to help you. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but here I'm using a $50 graphics tablet. It's available from Amazon. It's called the Genius Mouse Pen. And I'm curious how, if this is keeping up at all. In the application sharing, it is totally keeping yep. up. Real oh, time, like right on the money. Absolutely. Great. Okay. It's, there's right. no delay. Okay. Now I'm I'm firing up Jing, but I don't think you're probably seeing me firing up Jing. Is that correct? No, we're no. still seeing your with the tablet and the Amazon. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to try to do is go. You'd have to go back, back to, to that application. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me go back to Illuminate and ask it to share maybe the whole desktop. Um, bear with me for a moment. See, no so problem. It stop. takes a while to go back and forth between the application. Okay, so I'm going to sh try sharing my entire desktop. I'll give that a moment. Is that caught up? Yes. Okay. And then Great. we can just adjust okay, so now, the sliders to see your screen. So I'm going to fire up Jing. And so you're using your tablet okay. to access the the other applications, or you're still within the yes. smart recorder? Okay. Yeah. So I'm okay. So let's see, I've got Smart Notebook on most of the screen, and I'm curious now, when I hover okay. over the Jing Sun, if you see that popping up on the right-hand side. Okay, if we scroll all the way to the right. Oh, that's the I rub. see your I've red mouse large Okay. We can, oh, you know what, let me move that over here. Maybe that'll be easier. I just moved it. I'm going to move the Jing Sun to the... I'm going to move it to the top of the screen. Maybe that's better. Okay. So basically, I'm firing up Jing to do a capture. Okay. And I'm okay, going to capture ev everything that's in this window. 
And then I'm going to click on Capture Video. And I'll be, it'll say microphone. Oh, it says mute, so I'll turn the microphone on. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and just leave it, leave it muted for now. And I would just talk through this problem. I might read how much is 4 plus 2 times 10. All right. And if this was a student doing, doing this, hopefully they would start talking about order of operations. And they might even write down this acronym, PEMDAS, and say, well, we don't have any parentheses here. We don't have any exponents. Ah, but we're supposed to do multiplication or division from left to right next. So they'd say, aha, we'll do that. And that's 2 times 10. That's 20. And then we'll copy down the 4 plus. There's no more multiplications or divisions, so we'll do either additions or subtractions. From left to right, we have an addition, so that's 24. We might even be fancy and get the uh, little, oh, that's the circle tool. OK, that math cast is done. I'll click, and let me slow down a little. I'm going to click Stop. And I'm hoping that you are you still seeing this OK? Yes, we sure are. OK. All right. So if I click Play now, basically it will yeah. start playing. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to scrub through this so you can just see it captured everything. And then the amazing thing about Jing is not only is it free, but it connects up to screencast.com, which is free. So if I type in a name here like um, uh, order of operations, maybe one, then I can click on this button here and have it go up to upload to screencast.com. And depending on the connection speed, it's only half a megabyte, and I've got a fairly good connection. <laughs> um, it should upload pretty quickly. And then I would get a link to that uh, screencast mathcast that I can paste. And let's see how it's doing. And let's see, I'm almost there. And so while that loads, Thanks. you could do this within Word. You could do this with any any program with the white background as long as you're using Gene. Yes, right. In fact, that, thanks for saying that. that you're able to write. You could type it. Right. Right. You don't have to have a smart notebook. You know, cross this out and substitute mm -hmm. uh, PowerPoint with annotation tools. But there's the link to screencast.com. And I've got everybody can have, even students, a free 2 gigabyte account um, there. And so if I just click on this link, then up would pop that screencast mathcast. Um, no, I see, Matt, your question. I, it's not my mouse. It's not a, a tablet PC, although I have one of those. It's a $50 graphics tablet that I was using. So that's Jing. And I, if, if you're just using Jing, that's fine. But then let me just make a little note here. Um, and I see Jing is the entryway for teachers and students to get started with uh, creating screencasts. Because after Jing, you won't really want the Campaign Studio. But if you have Jing Pro, <laughs> then, and it's 15, about $15 a year, then what I use it, do with it is I create um, videos <laughs> a document camera, just plugging it in by USB. And you can see an example of that. I'll, I'll show you a link to an example of that in a, in a minute. Um, but I'm not going to dare try uh, sharing my document camera video on the screen and recording that with Jing Pro. Um, OK, so Jing, Jing Pro, phenomenal. But the rub is you get five minutes, and you can't you can't edit it with Jing yet. You can edit Jing videos with Camtasia Studio, though. So that's why they eventually people graduate, so to speak, to Camtasia Studio. And yes, absolutely, this, I just saw a question in the chat about um, embedding. Right, screencast.com, you can certainly get the embed code. Um, so if, if I were to go over to my screencast.com account, here, and I'll just do that really quickly. Might be worthwhile for you to see this. And I'll just log in. And I'll give this a chance to catch up in just a moment. And what's nice about screencast.com is it's an unlimited account of that you could upload. You know, there's no limit on the file storage. And you don't have to necessarily have creative videos with Gene when you upload them to screencast.com. I just put a 
note in the uh, chat window, someone's asking about document cameras. I really like the uh, Avermedia C2300, it's like six, seven hundred dollars. Um, so if I go to the, uh, the Jing folder now, and the Jing folder is kind of hidden a little bit, um, but I can do, do this with that video that I just made. It's probably down at the bottom here. Uh, no, sorry. Have too many June videos. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, are they alphabetical? I'm sorry, if somebody sees it there, let me know where it went to. <laughs> Apologize. Oh, it's probably up at the top. That was order of operations. I should be able to find it much faster than this. Oh, it's just interesting to look in, um, Yeah, it's interesting just to see your library while you're looking for it. So we're enjoying that too. <laughs> okay, well let me do this. Um, it's amazing being one of my other screencast.com accounts because you can connect up Jing to multiple screencast.com accounts. Let me do this. I'm going to open up another MathCast <laughs> and because I want to just show you what, what you can do in here if you're logged in. Oh, this is one I did at NECC last year. This is what a uh, viewer would see um, if they click on show details. I think I made this one. Oh, it's, it's refreshing. I made this one so that people could um, get a hold of the actual Swiss file in this case. They can download it and like embed it uh, or play it locally with the free Swift player. Or if you click on share, there is the share URL, and it's kind of a tiny URL, so to speak. And then here's the embed code if you want to put in the blog wiki website. It's all just right there. And then if I, let's see, did I have this set up? Um, oh, let's be on email. There should be a way to comment on this one. I think I don't have this one. Oh, like if I edit the details, then I can check the boxes and make it commentable, which is kind of a neat neat thing. So you could have it commentable on your blog or wiki, or you can have it commentable here in um, screencast.com. So is this going okay for folks so far? It is going very well. We're right with you. Okay. Do we have maybe uh, five more minutes or ten more minutes? I know you have someone after me that, and you have things you want to do in closing. You have about twelve minutes. So take your time. Oh, I'm sure people oh. would even want to stay afterwards, um, and those that need to leave, okay. would, you know, we understand. But you keep right on going. Okay. So um, back to the uh, smart notebook, and let me just enlarge this a little bit. Um, I just want to talk very briefly. Um, as I was saying before, you, you don't have to just uh, make math tasks, and you don't, certainly if you don't have a graphics tab, it's not like that's the end of the world. My math professor's sister, Linda, has done great work with a graphics tablet, like for calculus, and there's just tons and tons of links that she's, to math tasks that she's made of calculus that are some are 40 minutes long, but she's also done amazing things with some software called GeoGebra, which is free. So I just want to very quickly go to one of her, um, and she's calling them math tasks, but these are actually, um, so I'm trying to get back to where I was. Stop. Go back. Get jealous. It's running and it won't stop. I clicked on the wrong link. Now I should be back to where I want to be. Thanks for bearing with me. Um, since people are asking about uh, tools for graphs, there's free graphing software, WinPlot. There's also free virtual graphing calculators, PIs, other kinds of things. Um, and then here's hopefully going to be GeoGebra. Well, let me go back. Let me get back to where I was. You know what? I'm not being smart. I'm going to go right back to here. 
Um, you know what? Let's just, since we have just 10 minutes left, there's just extraordinary things you can do with GeoGebra. And my sister made lots of uh, screencasts to show how to use it as a neat tool for math or science. Uh, let me go on. Yeah, here's the document camera. Um, and uh, it could be an Avermedia, it could be uh, an Elmo, it could be whatever you have as long as it's got a USB input. And then the reason I talk about Jing Pro is you need Jing Pro to record MP4 files, so they'll be relatively small uh, uh, file size wise. And then you can do things like record use of manipulatives or science experiments. Um, and then I, but I would recommend if you're going to do that, at some point get Camtasia Studio so you can edit, compress. And there's a nice, um, uh, a nice uh, start to finish video that I actually created, I mean, with the document camera that shows everything about how to do this and that link is it's in the share links. Can you start that and show a bit about how to uh, how you use the oh. document camera? Oh, I'm, absolutely. I know time is limited and we can't see all of it, but it would give them a good start. And these links are on our share tab. Yeah. And his wiki, you can explore. Those are also on our share tab. And I'll get those up. Uh, the, the link yeah. for you as he's getting the video. Yeah. Well, and actually, let me just see. Can you can you see this here on screen now? Yes. With that's, Colleen and Linda. Okay, that's an yeah. Image from, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Though I was just writing some key people, I wanted to make sure I I mentioned. So let me do this. I'm, this is actually a. Um, I'm going to do two things here. Um, you don't have to use these two tools together, but I'm just trying to kill two birds with one stone. This is the LiveScribe Pulse Smart Pen. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away that notebook and I'm going to flip over to this little notebook here. This is a little LiveScribe. This, this is a, called the Smart Pen. You can buy them at Target, elsewhere for about $150. And then it uses special paper. You can print your own paper now. But what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to, this pen is on right now. So if I click, and I'm sorry, I might confuse you a little bit, but I'm just going to try this. If I click record here, in the bottom corner it says, now it says recording on here. But the thing with Jing that I could also do is get my friend Jing going here again. I could record what's going on in this window right here. So now I'm going to make this movie two ways, and I'm going to turn the microphone off. So hey, this is Tim Falberg, and I'm going to show how to solve a simple equation uh, x minus 3 equals 5. And I'm sorry, that's sunlight coming in there. Let's see if I can get the, the uh, that should be better. Let me try to autofocus that, sorry. That should be better in just a moment. So much light here. Well, and that's definitely something to keep in mind when you're doing these kinds of screencasts is to watch your, you know, your light factors and your light sources. <laughs> Thank you. That was a really good. There we go. And that should be much better. <laughs> okay, and I've been making a screencast the whole time, which I don't really, really want. So, um, but that's okay. right. So. Here I've got this equation. I'm going to go ahead and add 3 to both sides. And then we'll simplify the minus 3 and the plus 3 cancel. And uh, we get x equals 8. All right. So now I'm going to click stop with the pen. You just heard it stop. And it says that was a minute 37 seconds, mostly because of the <laughs> challenges I had with getting the light right. But what's cool now, I'm going to go ahead and also stop. Stop. Uh, well, here, I'll leave that over there so you can see it. I'm going to stop uh, Jing here. And voila, it's just made a um, movie of that whole thing. And I can scrub through it, and you can see it finally gets to the point. And if I had Camtasia Studio, I could actually easily edit this, whether it's a SWIFT or an MP4. But then I think it's pretty cool. Most people have doc, or many people have document cameras. But they don't necessarily connect them up with USB. Um, 
through their computer and then they don't necessarily make a, a video. Um, and uh, But the other thing I want to show you is now if I take this pen, oops, sorry, you can't see that. Let me just toss that. If I take this pen <laughs> and I drop it into this docking cradle, uh, it switches to the LiveScribe desktop. And in a moment, it's going to switch down here and say it's transferring content. And this is, uh, this is in my mind, an amazing tool because this pen can hold, I don't know, uh, 100 hours of audio and thousands of pages. So if you imagine handing a pen, a smart pen, to a student or students and having them one at a time or maybe in pairs um, make math casts or it could be anything. Um, and then it's, this is what happens. Let's see, I was using the flip. Notepad, those are brand new. They're like $15 for a set of four. So there's that problem. And if I double click on it, there it is. So if I click on this, I can hear my voice. And if I scrub through this, it plays. And then if I, um, this is a session. So if I upload this session, it will play on the internet. Let me just click go off to a, uh, to a pen cast. So I'm back on the wiki. I'll just do a search for actually I'll just go back to the home page and type and go to pencast. And this is a rich field fertile for uh, fertile for any of you to um, make a mark in and get grant money, et cetera, et cetera. That's what I like to help people do because I've done it myself is take a small investment in one tool like a tablet or a smart pen and leverage that investment into getting your PTA, PTO, other people to give you thousands of dollars to get more tools that improve student learning. Um, here's some great um, pen cast by Julian Cloud students. Let me just go to her wiki, not her blog. And so essentially, one of these essentially I'm sorry. Essentially, what that yep. pen did was it recorded the audio and the movement of what you wrote. I'll record that in the video, and it's stored on the pen. Right. Is right. That and, and that. Thank you. For, that. Thank you for, simple, for for saying that. Yeah. And okay. uh, here is that. That's correct. So then, and then when it's synced up, you can upload it, and you can have just a PDF with static writing, or you can have um, the replayable um, notes. And I'm trying to get this to <laughs> to replay. Um, let me go to a, a different one. That will certainly. This is what it is. My oh, sorry, right here on the screen, you should see a little flash player. Oh, here it comes. <laughs> I don't know if people are able to see that or not. Um, but then that right, it plays the uh, audio and the writing. And if you go up to the upper right corner, go full screen, and turn off the preview, then when it plays back, you don't see any of the writing until it is written, or hear the audio until it goes with it. OK, well, um, I, I appreciate your kind feedback in the uh, in the ch chat window. Um, oh, exam view. <laughs> That's uh, just Peggy. You just commented about that. You'll notice if you go to the the MathCast wiki that there's a huge section on exam view. The reason that I like exam view as a teacher it saved me a lot of time in creating assessments. But the reason I like it for MathCast and for physics or chemistry, you can create dynamic questions. And so that's what many of us started doing years ago, but then now you can get them with your textbook or the exam view learning series. So what I'm showing you here is a link to a screen, set of screencasts I made called the many uses of a dynamic exam view question. And basically that one dynamic question can be used, or a version of it could be used um, in notes or a couple of versions in notes to annotate Maybe if it's multiple choice or numeric response with response system like CPS by instruction. Um, but then at some point, why not use another version of that dynamic exam view question as a um, as a basis of a math cast? And so that's where I just clicked here. And um, uh, but, anyway, but these kinds of things are are there, and I actually show. Basically, all of uh, many of the uses of of the uh, 
other dynamic exam view question there. Um, I'm going to, I talk like nonstop, and I'm sorry I didn't leave more time for questions. Um, oops, maybe I'll take some questions. Okay. Um, if you have a question that you would like to use your microphone, you can click on the, the hand with the green arrow. And if you don't have a microphone, then you can also just type your question in the chat. Um, George M., you have the microphone if you'd like to ask your question or make a comment. Professors, how would we steal your work, or could we? Steal? What, which, which work? Um, all the methods that are like freely available, that's one thing I've tried to do, and maybe it's something that, I shouldn't say I, that we, my, my sister and Graham and Colleen and Robert Fant have tried to basically put all the methods out there for people to use. Uh, but if you mean the actual, like how could you steal the actual math gas or? Yeah, the MathCast, the Gene MathCast, you've got a super library there. Why would I want to re reinvent the wheel if I could steal oh. or pay you nominal amounts for it? Oh, okay. Oh, no, yeah, that, that's an interesting question. Well, okay, so when you create a um, screencast with Gene and it goes up to the kind of hidden Gene folder, you can certainly make it downloadable for any, anyone if you want to make it downloadable. You can also move it into another folder and organize it that way. Um, but you know, one of the things that I've, I've been all about with this is most teachers work in complete isolation as craftsmen, like from the dark ages laboring in their own you know, room by themselves. And everybody here today is not like that. But imagine that there was not just a library of math casts or physics casts, chem casts, English casts that students and tap into, but same thing for, for teachers to tap into and why reinvent the wheel, but also a lot about this is getting the students, in my mind, the person who does the work does the learning, so let's get the students doing their own math class and creating their own portfolios. But no, absolutely, <laughs> steal, take anything, any of those math casts, take the uh, embed code or hyperlinks to them. Um, and you know, Colleen King um, has a tremendous number of phenomenal uh, math casts on her math playground that are really professionally done um, and other people do as well and I think most of those people would be happy to have you link to them or in some cases just embed them in your own um, resources. Thank you, Tim. And that, oh, sure. Yes, that's a great idea about sharing and creating those libraries of different subjects and of course this is not limited to just K-12. Um, or to um, just math. Um, you're certainly welcome to use them. I'm sure Tim, of course, you know, giving credit and all of that, you know, giving credit where credit's due. But do we have another question that somebody else would like to ask? Thank you so much for asking that great question, George. Sure, I'd like to stop in and ask a question because, you know, sure. Tim, this is new to me. You've given me all these different tools. I haven't seen some of them. I'm not sure where would I would start, which tool I would choose to um, to use. So can you can you do that? Can you tell me tablet, scribe pen, the document camera? Where do they best apply? Okay, yeah. And one of the things that I've tried to do um, along that line, but I'm gonna this is kind of inspiring me to do more of this is on my wiki. I've tried to kind of lay things out. So let me go back to the top of this. And I'm actually would like to develop a whole like course from beginning steps to more advanced, and then also based on what tools people currently have and what's affordable. Well, that's not exactly where I wanted to go. I wanted to go to over on the right hand side. There's um, how to make a math cast. So there's lots of um, on this particular page. There's VoiceThread first. There's Jing or Jing Pro second. And then uh, if we move down, uh, here's this whole getting started series. And then, let's see, um, I'm trying to think of, oh, there's a whole section here on MathCast tools. So if you click on that, there's, um, now this is kind of heavy on using graphics tablets. And it doesn't necessarily, I haven't added a section here on document cameras. Um, and I need to do that here. So here's a whole section on, uh, and I'm sorry, are you following, following this? Are you all able to see yes. this as I scroll yes, down? Yes, all these pages. Okay. 
Yes. Okay, so there's some good resources there, but you know, I really take to heart your question because people see this, they get inspired, but then they get overwhelmed. People are like, well, that's great, but I can't, where, where do I start? And so um, I would really like to encourage every one of you, if you're feeling a little overwhelmed, please just email me and then I will email you back with and some links to where, to where to go and I'll ask you, you know, what te technology you have and make some recommendations. Because uh, I feel like that's part of my, I don't say job, but it's my passion to help get lots of people going with this. And then eventually maybe you can be uh, the beta testers for a course. Buddy, Tim, we just get right on that task. <laughs> Absolutely. That, this is so exciting. And, and I know we kind of run out of time for a bit. Um, and if you could stick around, Tim, maybe um, afterwards people might still have some more questions. I don't know what your time is today, Tim, but uh, we understand if people can't stay and if they do need to leave. But this is great, and I'm sure that we're going to have um, more requests and information about this and um, using these different resources to create not just math caps, but you know, the screencast of this type. But the, the pen, I think, is what is really drawing us to this. But again, like you said, you can do these things with the very inexpensive tools that you have. Um, even if you just had, you know, a, a flip cam with a regular whiteboard or a pen and paper, you know, it's not as, as technologically, maybe aesthetically appealing. But there are some really great resources. And, and Tim, you've given us such a great start, and we're so thankful for that. So. Um, let me go ahead, and if you want to, if everybody is um, has time to stay, you're welcome to stay. I'm just going to wrap things up for just a second, and um, Tim, I'm going to move your. Uh, you don't need to close the the application sharing. I'm just going to close it and, or move it down. So you may want to do that as well, everyone, um, as we go ahead and continue on. Um, in the share tab link, is that? Um, the link that I'm putting in here is just for, and it's one that I came across, annotation tools, and it's free, but it is only for PCs. But that's one that I came across that you can use in any program. So that's something to keep in mind, uh, whether when you're creating webcasts or, or screencasts or so forth. And then this is our share tabs link. You can also click on the share tabs link directly from the chat window or right here, and it has a lot of the resources and the things that um, Tim has been talking about as well as his wiki and his website and some of the videos there. Um, I believe, Tim, that you said that you're creating uh, some, and so some are copyrighted and you're not able to share them. But for the most part, whatever's on his wiki, of, of course, is free to share and use with your teachers, your colleagues, and your students. And so um, all of that information is in our share tab. So be sure to check out the share tab. And uh, our, before we get to our survey link, I'll get that and put that in here. Um, Steve Hargadon has also created the Future of Education, another meme community. And coming up this Thursday, May 21st at 5 p.m. Pacific or 8 p.m. Eastern is Chris D. Uh, from the Harvard Graduate School of Education, and Steve will be interviewing him this Thursday. So be sure to tune in for that. And next week is also going to be another exciting week. This was great. Uh, but we're going to have Tony Vincent. And if you're not familiar with Tony, you're going to want to stick around and make sure that you're with us next week. When we talk about interactive, choose your own adventure story creations, and iPod touches and netbooks within the classroom and making these tools affordable and easy to use. And we're going to find out what are interactive stories and how can I use handhelds to support my teaching. And one little teaser, if you're familiar with the Choose Your Own Adventure stories, then you kind of have an idea of some of the great things that Tony Vincent's going to be sharing with us next week. And um, he's going to be fabulous as well. So you're going to want to stick around. It's going to be another great week. And we want to thank everybody who came today and of course our special guest Tim Falberg. We are so appreciative and Steve for um, joining and stepping in earlier, our founder of uh, Classroom2.0.com and the Future of Education. 
Thank you so much for your comments and for everybody who participated and came today. It's just been wonderful, and we are very appreciative of Illuminate for providing this forum here for us to meet each week at the same time. And so let me go ahead and get the um, survey link, and we have changed that so that it's not just about Illuminate, but although it would be great if um, you would take the time to fill that out and give, of course, feedback to Illuminate, but also we appreciate the feedback when we're planning sessions and special guests. And I'm going to put it in the chat. You can click on it um, from directly here in the chat window, as well as I'm going to put it out on the slide. And you can click on it directly from the slide. And if you're not um, watching live, you can um, click on it from the chat log that we post with our recording links on our website later this afternoon or this weekend. So be sure also if you want to catch the recording, we went through a lot of things very quickly. Check out our um, Classroom 2.0 Live site. And that is also on the Share tab. And all of that information is available for us. So Tim, if you have a few more minutes, it looks like we still have several people here who are not leaving. And so they may still have questions if you have a few minutes, Tim, and you're able to stick around. More if people are interested in connecting that that way, I'd love to do that. And I see Colleen, I have this then here, and then Graham McNeil from Australia's here where it's very early in the morning. I'm looking to see if my sister Linda um, or Robert Fant are here. I don't see them. But Colleen, could you um, come in for a minute and then Graham maybe come in for a minute and say um, a few or more than a few words? Sure, go ahead, Colleen or Graham. Uh, you both have the microphone ability. So, okay, Colleen doesn't have a microphone today. Graham, do you have one that um, that you would like to share your feedback or your experiences with? Okay, I see the uh, microphone is active, but I don't hear anything. I don't know if I'm the only one that's not hearing anything. Um, you want to keep trying, and Tim, you want to um, make in a few more comments until so we can see if we can get Graham working. Um, so uh, I, I'm guessing that most of you are familiar with MathPlayground.com, but if you're not, it's a phenomenal site. Where Colleen has poured an extraordinary amount of her time and life in creating wonderful resources, and they've been cited in lots in a number of books and other places. So Colleen, I would have definitely encourage you to take a look at the polished, very professional math cast that Colleen has on her site. Um, I mean, she has lot. The neat thing about those is she has other activities to go go with those. So it's like she kind of completes all of the dots to to make those um, math casts kind of a just a part of the greater greater whole. Because there's all sorts of interactivities. Uh, engaging things that she's created with Flash, et cetera. Um, so um, thanks, Colleen. I think you at least hear me at it. <laughs> and they are wonderful, and they're um, great athletes to run through a demonstration with your um, students. And um, Peggy has put in the um, link to the exam view. I don't know if you have a few minutes to address that a little bit more. Or if there's a question that somebody has that they'd like to ask of Tim to um, get further clarification or some more guidance on creating MathCast, please let us know. Let us know. Or should I notice that uh, Matt Martin, Matt Martin uh, mentioned uh, uh, the welcome to the request back? Do you have a, a, a you solution have a, for that? That's the way you that. Oh, I'm sorry, I was getting feedback on that. Yes, could you say yeah, that again, Marna? I noticed Matt mentioned that 
the uh, laptop tablet didn't work very well with the Mac. And is that something you've experienced? Are you always working on PC, or do you know of a, a, an alternate for a Mac user? So that the tablet didn't work well on the Mac because you're about two years ago. I had a Mac, and I've done some work with uh, with Jing on a Mac and tablets, and Mac worked fine. Um, but I don't have experience lately. So I would love it if one of you has a Mac and can try an inexpensive tablet and kind of give up maybe a report back to me, the group, and let's um, nail that down because currently I don't have a Mac and I can't really test that. I can't tell you that Chem Studio Studio is coming out for the Mac later this year and that will be huge, I think, because right now there's Snap Z Pro on the Mac and maybe there are better for the power uh, user than Camtasia Studio. Okay, Maxine, yeah, great, great. For, oh, uh, yeah. Right. And we did a session, Lorna did a session for us on screencast. So on our website on the archives pages are examples as well as lots of resources to create screencasts with free software. And Lorna does a great job with that. Um, she uses ScreenFlow. I use Camtasia. Um, both are paid programs, but there are also free programs out there that are just as well and just the same great quality with editing. Um, it's more of as long as your content is solid with whatever you're doing. Um, yes, the pens are really great and neat, but um, you can certainly do these with with you know the limited resources that you, that you have. And so you can build up, like you said, start out with one tool wow people and really show the power and the potential and take it from there and get some um, grants and really take advantage of the stimulus funding um, grants that are out there now. Um, that was very well. Go ahead. Thank you. And George, did you have another comment or a question you'd like to share? Yeah, it skipped over the top of my 61-year-old uh, brain right now, but uh, let me think on it a minute. I'll come back. Okay, no problem. Just let us know. Does anybody else have a question that they would like to ask or share? Go right ahead, Tim. Oh, I'm I'm 50, and for me, and people like Linda, my sister, and. Graham and Colleen have, have certainly helped keep me younger because you know how it is when we see students engaged in creating high quality work, it, it really gets us going, doesn't it? And uh, gives us hope because sometimes learning, especially if it can be excited about math, is that possible? <laughs> that exactly. And math and technology are my passions, my true, total passion. So. You know, um, when Peggy mentioned having you on, and and we, I saw some of the things that you were doing. I just knew that, you know, if I were still in the classroom and when I do go back after my master's, this is this is what I will be doing. So, um, I think this is just really exciting and really a great way to go. And I'm so glad that you pointed out that it's not just limited to math, and it's definitely not limited to K-12 either. You know all levels, whatever you're doing, professional development, college level, whatever. It's really great. Um, can you briefly touch on the the what the, the bonuses or the um, reason why you might want to go with the Gene Pro instead of the regular Gene, the free so the, version? The look, sure. So the way I look at the studio is I think Gene should, because it's free and connect, connect provides a free way to share screencasts and images. I mean, Jing can do images not as well as Snagit, but pretty well. But that should be on every image of every student, teacher, computer, so that they can easily collaborate and share good good stuff for PD or whatever. And then Jing Pro, um, and you can go to jingproject.com or go to this website and find this out. But Jing Pro has the advantage of, well, let's see, you can not only uh, go to SWF flash format, but you can go to MP4 format, which is particularly good for um, okay, okay. videos. I and see. then you can direct, uh, upload the MP4s 
YouTube, which you can't do teacher tube, I think. Right, right. And in whether you have the Jing or the Jing Pro, you're still limited to um, recording a five minute video with whether you have either version, paid or not. That is the limit. But if you were uploading screencasts that you made with the pen or um, some other device, you can upload those for free to screencast.com. And it's unlimited storage, so those can be longer if you wanted them to be longer. It's just with Jing in itself, the free or the pro, both of them limit each video to a length of five minutes. And a lot of people will say, well, but I have to tell you. Right. Students could do this. Boom. Yeah, it seems like your audio is kind of going in and out. Oh, mine is. Is that better? Yes, much better. Yes, much better. Yes. Come up, um, and then people, and I'll, I'll try to pause, so take a breath, so people can ask questions. Um, let's see. Well, captivate by Adobe, that's fine, but that's for higher quality, polished, interactive um, movies, and it costs. I don't, know, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's expensive, but um, yeah, no, the Jing Pro is limited to five minutes per movie. Um, oh, David Trust, and is David, yeah, David's still there. He asked, um, what's your experience with having students create the content and use these tools to teach other students? Aha, that's an awesome question. I have a few friends especially back in Washington State, who have been having their students um, add math casts to an outline for each of their classes. And um, so that other students hopefully can go and review math there. And I would hope maybe comment and encourage the other students. But really, there hasn't been much research done in this area. I feel like, and that's what I may work on a PhD on, but it's, it's so right. Because students are engaged in creating the math cast, and then if we can get them to tier um, review them so that teachers don't have to listen to these, because teachers' eyes would roll if you think about having them watch and listen to math cast and, and grade them. Um, but I think there's tremendous potential um, in, in, in having students create and share them with each other. Imagine two students pairing two students of a strong student at one grade level and a weak student at a lower grade level and pairing them up, whether it's with voice thread or however, but just the great things that could happen with that. And somebody just needs to do some research. Um, in this, in that, and it could be you. Why not? I mean, get a grant. Or connect with the educator you know, in higher ed in your state. And do some research. And boy, you get some NSF money or some other money. Question? Somebody's asking, who is it? George? George? You have yeah, the mic? Go ahead. Okay, uh, Tim, uh, the question I had originally, you covered a little bit, but I take it there is the capability of uploading videos uh, into a screencast. Um, however, my question relates to the types of videos. For instance, our school district has access to Discovery Education. There's also some good video segments on the Futures Channel. And have you had some experience with the ins and outs, copyright problems, et cetera, that any limitations? around how you could use those videos in a screencast. Oh, OK. So what I hear you saying is, like, in Discovery, they actually created with tablet PCs, like to go with, along with textbooks that were created by teachers. So copyright, I'm sure on those, you, you couldn't you know, like copy those and put them up on screencast.com. Um, but that's where I would say, OK, you can keep paying the subscription. For discovery, and maybe it's it's worthwhile. Or Hot Math has lots of for free during the day. 
so there are those resources, but you know, I, I also like the idea of teachers, students working together and Colleen and I and Linda worked on a grant, didn't get it, from MacArthur, founded by the MacArthur Foundation, but one of the pieces was going to be basically to create an enormous public domain library of math casts and it could be in students, they were going to be in students' voices or, or teachers. Still be done. It just helps to have someone organize it and then have enable people to easily contribute to it. So then you wouldn't have issues with copyright. And then maybe eventually we get schools out of the dark ages where so many things are blocked that are good. Um, because I work with teachers who they can't get to um, screencast.com or they can't get to PBWiki, PBWorks, can't get to lots of places. It's like, hmm, this isn't good for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, Tim, I think that's. I'm sorry, I over overran you. I, I just think that's a super idea. There's such a dearth of those good math videos, and especially a library that could be easily accessed on short notice. Well, yeah, that's terrific. And then, but and then I would want to go with the library resources like Colleen has her on her site. You have things that engage students along with that that are also free, and then provide a way for students to you know give them some problems for them to try their hand at creating math casts. So the students are not only viewing them, but they're creating and then if there can be an easy way for them to be commented on, you know, in a safe safe way. Because the students the students watch and then create their own, say a, you know, using a different dynamic exam version of a, a question, uh, then I think student learning would be really enhanced. And then students can walk away with a, a digital portfolio of their work. To, to share with people. Thanks, Tim. I'll, I'll give the mic to other people, but I really appreciate your input. Oh, you bet. You bet. Thank you, George. It was a great question. Um, let's see. S. Dreyer. Um, not sure. I love using interactive whiteboards to create math tests. Yeah, if people have interactive whiteboards, that's great. One of the challenges with that can be recording the, the audio. So, what I've done are things like close to uh, the board or potentially if people have an interactive whiteboard, there's nothing that says you couldn't then sit at your computer and use that software with a tablet sitting down or having, you know, kids do that. But interactive whiteboards, you know, you get a couple kids at them and work it interactively. It's nice if you can capture their voice. That's that's been the always been the challenge is getting the audio. Right. And if you just have a simple flip cam and the kids are at the board you can create those videos, even if you didn't upload them anywhere, but you could upload them to screencast.com for free, um, of course, if you had the permissions and so forth. And the kids could then use those, you know, for tutorials in class and homework if they're doing stuff at home, um, you know, but it can be just as simple as a video camera and a plain whiteboard without, you know, without the technology other than a video camera, you know. If, if that's all that your resources held. That, that's so interesting because captured not of the students' faces, you know, from their back or just of their writing. Well, same thing with the teacher, and then you don't have maybe so many of those issues, you know, getting parents' per permission with doing that. I pretty much stayed away from the video because I found so many people still like to have their. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, you know. Yeah. Sorry. No, go right ahead. Continue. Uh, Graham has done some really neat things with checking out uh, tablets and thumb drives and microphones to students and having them do it at home. And so then um, the idea of the the uh, the flip cam, you know, the video cam. Why not have students at home not only just record things on a whiteboard, but oh, wow, have them shoot real video doing experiments related to math or science or whatever, get, getting getting those up. I think that that has a lot to be said for it. Hi, Timmy. Absolutely, Timmy, nice, absolutely nice. Go right away, Graham. Go right away, Graham. Oh right, I had a bit of problem with my microphone. Yeah, when uh, Tim was just talking about 
the students taking the tablets home. That's how I actually got um, one of my calculus classes to do one of their assessment items. They had to do a number of questions as a math class. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's, that's interesting. interesting. That's an interesting way to do that. Yeah, one of the things they have here is they concentrate on communication and justification. So I found that when they were actually sitting at a microphone with their little tablet, they could actually explain what they were doing. So rather than just getting a pencil and paper solution, which is a bit hard to work out what they're thinking is, it made it a lot easier to um, assess that area. Okay, I think we might still yeah, be having some problems, problems with some, some of the audio. Some of the audio. Oh, okay, audio is kind of rough still. Sorry, George. You're a bit soft, Tim. If you're able to increase your volume, that would be great. If you could. Okay, is, it, is that better? Yes, that's great. That's better. Okay. Okay. Um, if people are, let's see, can I go back to sharing my screen and I'll bring up sure. uh, a few things on Graham's site. Let's see. Um, so I'm showing the math maker. Are people seeing that? I see it. Okay, Pam, thanks, Sam. That means other people can see it. So I'm showing yeah. Graham the math maker mm -hmm. site. And then in a minute, I want to go over to Colleen's site too. So um, what's new, let's see, um, well, let me go down to the how to, and no, it's, uh, I should know where things are here, I'm sorry. Oh, you know, I can always do this, I can go to the index and just type in, oh, there's ACM, agent character movie. I just have, feel like I have to show one of these. Okay, here's differentiating with the Merlin. <laughs> so, Graham, actually, Graham wrote a whole manual on how to do this. And um, let me just, well, if, you, if you're able to see that and you've got the link to the Math Makers site, let me just paste into the chat the URL for this Merlin movie, and you could potentially watch it. Well, this is really fun. And I know years ago when I had a $10,000 grant for MathCast, and I let students kind of have some freedom. They did amazing things with storyboarding and adding cartoons. Um, and then Graham's work with uh, Asian character movies and documenting it, because that's what's so great. He wrote a whole manual you can download um, that shows you or your students how to do this, because not very many of you are going to have fun, time to do this. Um, it's, it's just great. And then my sister Lynn in Macedonia, she actually used Asian character movies um, and scripts in English and Macedonian to very easily convert math cast, Asian character math cast, movie math cast to um, different languages. So it's amazing what collaboration can lead to, isn't it? <laughs> um. Definitely, and that's what, why these sessions that we're having are so important, um, just to share and balance ideas and expand and, you know, help one another like, like George was saying earlier about creating a database of libraries and so forth. And I know right. uh, Rushton Hurley's site, nextvista.org, is working on trying to create videos in the same way. They're not like math casts like this, but you know, trying to get those resources for teachers so that the job is easier and um, we're sharing the wealth instead of each recreating the wheel. Yes. And I'd like to get that that link. Um, and just back to Graham's site for one more minute. Graham um, has taught physics too. So here he has a set of uh, physics casts, they're called bycasts, and he actually has dynamic exam view questions that he created for many of these. They're actually up on, uh, let's see, Teachers Pay Teachers. They're under my name, but they're downloadable sets of exam the questions and not for very much money either because it takes time to create dynamic exam the questions if you don't just get them for free from your with a textbook. But that's a neat you know any physics teachers 
that's a, a neat area. Um, and then Graham, he's the one I give a lot of credit to because he um, was really taken with MathCast years ago and has done so much with his students, more than anyone I know. And then he's written up all these great things, um, advantage of MathCast and what MathCast um, can do for parents, students, teachers. Um, it's, it's, it's great, great stuff. Um, Let's see, and then I want to go over to Colleen's math playground, which is so good, so great. And uh, looking for the link, there it is, math videos. Colleen works hard all day at a regular job, and then and she's like, we do a lot of our work in the middle of the night. <laughs> is that about right, Colleen? <laughs> Um, if you just go to one of these, uh, Colleen, what's a good, I don't want to say what's a good one, <laughs> what's one of your favorites? <laughs> Colleen says that's pretty much how it goes with staying up in the middle of the night to do this. Where's your hunt? Um, like prime factorization? Okay. All right. And that's right, you, you all can click on any of these. Uh, oh, that's right, and that's what you should do too, sorry. Um, just click on any of those. But her, her math casts are, Highly polished and very nicely done. And I think she's using, are you still using the uh, like a Wacom relatively small, less than $100 tablet? Is that right, Colleen? Oops. Oh, and I just started hearing the first five, ten seconds of um, a Colleen uh, math cast, and it reminded me one of the things I think. Um, it's just extraordinary that Colleen's math cast in particular is the energy in her voice. And I think it would behoove all of us, and I need to do this myself, like once a week, go watch and listen to a Colleen King math cast or have, a, have students listen to them so that they understand it's not just about communicating math kind of like dryly. That's terrible. That's what too many math teachers do that don't know as much about communication as they should. <laughs> but if you watch and listen to Colleen's math cast, it's the voice and, and the ability to explain the math concepts that's phenomenal. And that's what we, we get our students to the level that a chance to level or Colleen is with voice and math where we're going to be set. <laughs> That's, that's key because whatever you create, it's your passion and your enthusiasm is what's going to drive that content home and make those connections. Yeah. Yeah. And then imagine if students have great voice and they uh, are listened to by their peers, then it's their peers now whose voices they're hearing, and they'll recognize what's high quality and what's not. And then they could, uh, Graham actually has a rubric for grading math casts, and I'm sure there's a piece of it that's on voice expression. Sorry, shut up for a little while. And um, Tammy's uh, test to share tabs, I don't know that we have Tammy's. Um, website in our share tabs that I'm putting that in the chat and it's also will be in the chat log for those who are watching and weren't able to make it live. So go ahead and continue. Aren't we all really blessed by uh, Lorna, Peggy, Kim, uh, setting this up, and I, I feel in particular today I got to reconnect uh, with Colleen a little bit, even though I didn't get to hear her voice. Got to talk with Graham and got to meet Lorna, Peggy, Kim, and and Steve. And then I'm really honored too um, by all of you um, attending and then staying around, and and um, love to continue collaborating with you and. Um, are we a lucky group that gets to connect because of these wonderful people that sponsor this? Absolutely. And it started with Steve, you know, the brainchild of Steve Hargadon, and we've all just carried out the vision 
in each of our own paths along our own journeys. And that's what's important each week is that, you know, we have this time to get together and just share and learn and all grow. You know, regardless of how long you've been teaching or using technology, um, you know, some of us are very experienced, but yet this is new to us. So we were newbies in a way. And so we thank you for that, Tim and Colleen and Graham and Shambles and everybody who stayed after and everybody who contributes. So we thank you all for that. And I could still stay in a little bit longer. My wife and, and daughter left for a while. <laughs> but, it, but And I can also connect with people for a little while outside of this, depending on what you need to, 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 to stop things here. Um, yeah, I'm glad people are so energized. You know, it's it's fun, isn't it, to, to collaborate and get energized and get ideas from each other because we know what it's like when we our day to day we don't have this happen um sometimes in in a week. So to have this well now it happens every week thanks to these folks. You're welcome, Tammy. Yes, and we continue the conversations on our individual blogs on the classroom two dot oh dot com we can we'd love to continue those conversations as well as on our live dot classroom site um, and the the actual recording the mp4 the mp3 and the chat log will all be posted to our live website later this weekend uh, so be sure and watch out for those uh, recordings when those links are posted and I guess we'll go ahead and let you go, Tim, because we, you know, your time is valuable, and we appreciate you so much for making this happen, and for everybody for coming and contributing. Thank you so much, and have a great day or great evening or good night, depending on where you're from, like Shambles in Thailand. And please join us on May 23rd for Tony Vincent at the same time. Thank you all. Have a great day. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.